Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about the integration techniques of integrated circuits or ICs. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will try to understand the fundamentals of integration techniques. Thereafter, we will learn about the different types of integration techniques, starting with small scale integration, medium scale integration, then large scale integration, very large scale integration, and finally, ultra large scale integration. Now, before diving straight to the integration techniques, let's recap a bit. In the evolution of computers, we have seen at first comes the mechanical era. Computers in this era used to be built using mechanical parts. Coming to first generation, during that period, vacuum tubes came into the picture and the computers of the first generation used vacuum tubes as basic building blocks. Then came the second generation of computers. Transistors replaced the vacuum tubes used in the first generation computers. And then began the third generation where the advent of integrated circuits came into the picture. With the development in integration technology, in 1971, the fourth generation of computers began and we witnessed the advent of microprocessors. Now, if you remember, in the second generation, as I told you, transistor circuits were being used to build the basic building blocks for digital computers, that is, the basic logic gates. Coming on to the third generation, due to the advent of integrated circuits, Instead of the transistor circuits, IC chips were being used to implement the basic logic gates for digital computers. Focus on the name, integrated circuits. Now today we are learning about integration techniques. Now what is integration? Well, it means to bring together or incorporate parts into a whole. Allow me to walk you through the comparative study between transistor circuits versus integrated circuits for better understanding. Now, if you notice, this is the AND transistor circuit and this is the AND integrated circuit chip. Observe, in this circuit, we can implement only one AND gate logic using two transistor switches and the resistances. On the other hand, in this integrated circuit chip, on a single chip, we can implement four different AND gates and every one of them has two inputs and one output. So clearly, in this chip, we have incorporated the different parts of this particular circuit that too many a times. And therefore, the name integrated circuit. So clearly, this particular circuit's components have been brought together in this particular chip that too many a times. I hope why these circuits are named as integrated circuits is clear to you now. Now coming to this type of integration, that is, in a single chip, that is 7408 AND gate, if you notice, since we are implementing four different AND gate logics, comparing that to the transistor AND gate logic circuit, if you notice, using two transistor switches, we implemented one single AND gate logic. So clearly, in this particular integrated circuit, we must have implemented at least eight transistor switches so that four different AND gates can be implemented. Integrations like this are called SSI or small scale integrations. So let's now learn about all the different integration techniques. At first, in 1960s, small scale integration was introduced. Now, small scale integration basically means that in an integrated circuit, we are supposed to have the number of transistors per chip as less than equals to 10. That is, if the chip includes 1 to 10 transistors, we are going to call that small scale integration. In 1964, the 7400 series ICs were introduced. Notice the numbers of these chips 7404. 7408, 7432. Basically, all of them in their prefixes have the digits 7 and 4. Now, apart from these integrated circuits, there are certainly more number of integrated circuits in the 7400 series. And this series of integrated circuits were manufactured and developed by 
Texas Instruments. So to sum it up, in 1960s, the integration technique Small Scale Integration or SSI came into the picture. It means the number of transistors per chip is going to be less than or equals to 10. And one suitable example of that is IC7400 series. Now in the late 1960s and early 1970s, the next integration technique came into the picture, that is medium scale integration. Now what is the meaning of medium scale integration? Well, if the number of transistors per chip is more than 10 but less than 500, then it is called the medium scale integration. One notable instance of MSI integration technique was the 74181 arithmetic and logic unit which was also built by Texas Instruments. Introduced in February 1970, this ALU integrated circuit chip contained 170 to 175 transistors per chip. It operated on 4-bit binary data inputs and generated 4-bit binary results or outputs. The ALU74181 could also perform basic arithmetic operations like addition, subtractions, and logical operations like AND, OR, and XR. This arithmetic and logic unit on a chip included carry input and carry output pins. Therefore, it could be cascaded to handle even larger bits. Therefore, after SSI, the next integration technique was MSI, and in case of medium scale integration, the number of transistors per chip is going to be more than 10, however, less than or equals to 500. And one notable example of that is Texas Instruments 74181 arithmetic and logic unit integrated circuit chip. In 1970s itself, the next integration technique was also introduced, which was called large scale integration. In this type of integration technique, the number of transistors per chip was more than 500 but less than equals to 10,000. In 1971, Intel introduced its first microprocessor, that is, Intel's 4004 microprocessor. Now, initially, the casings of the integrated circuits used to be of ceramics. And that's why the prefix C. Later, in order to introduce more durability, the housings became plastic housings. And that's why in the later chips, we have the prefix P. Now here, we should note one thing. The number of transistors per chip for the Intel microprocessor 4004 was 2300, making this as a part of the LSI integration technique. Because if you notice, it is 2300, which is definitely greater than 500, However, less than 10,000. So, after SSI, we have MSI, then LSI, that is large scale integration. The number of transistors per chip for this is more than 500. However, less than or equal to 10,000. And one notable example of this is Intel 4004, which had 2300 transistors on a chip. By far, you already have understood that with each integration technique, we were basically increasing the number of transistors per chip. Therefore, keeping that process intact, in 1980s, the very large-scale integration technique was introduced. In very large-scale integration, or VLSI, the number of transistors per chip was more than 100,000. And one notable instance of this particular integration technique is Intel's 80286 microprocessor. Introduced in February 1982, it was Intel's first 16-bit microprocessor with separate, that is non-multiplexed, address and data buses. It consisted number of transistors per chip as 1,34,000. And this microprocessor was widely used in IBM's PC, that is personal computer, AT, that is advanced technology personal computers. And IBM PC AT was introduced in 1984. So to summarize, in 1980s, the VLSI integration technology emerged. The number of transistors per chip in this particular integration technology is more than 100,000. And an example of this is Intel 80286 microprocessor, which consisted 1,34,000 transistors per chip. After this, during 1990s, the next advent of integration technique, that is ultra-large scale integration technique, emerged. 
In this integration technique, that is ULSI, the number of transistors per chip is actually more than 1 million. In March 1993, Intel's Pentium 1 processors were introduced, which had 3.1 million transistors per chip. Now coming to the modern day processors, if we talk about the Intel's Core i9 9th generation, for these processors, the number of transistors per chip is 1.7 billion. These are some of the instances of the ultra-large scale integration technique. So to summarize, in 1960s, the integration technique was named as small scale integration or SSI. Number of transistors per chip in this case is less than 10. In late 1960s and early 1970s, MSI integration technique emerged. And in this integration, the number of transistors per chip is less than 500, however, more than 10. Then in 1970s, with the advent of Intel's 4004 microprocessor, the LSI, that is large scale integration technique, emerged. In this case, the number of transistors per chip was more than 500, however, less than or equals to 10,000. Intel 4004 included 2300 transistors on a microprocessor. Then in 1980s, VLSI, that is very large scale integration technique, emerged. In this integration technique, the number of transistors per chip was more than 100,000. Suitable example of this is Intel's 80286, which included 1,34,000 transistors on a microprocessor chip. Finally, introduced in 1990s, the ultra-large scale integration technique became so advanced that the number of transistors per chip we could incorporate was more than 1 million. So this is all about the integration techniques of integrated circuits. So we covered all the topics that we were supposed to cover in this particular session. We began our discussion with the fundamentals of integration techniques. With a comparative study of transistor circuits versus integrated circuits, we tried to understand the basic concepts of integration techniques. Thereafter, we covered small scale integration, that is SSI, medium scale integration, MSI, large scale integration, LSI, VLSI or very large scale integration. And finally, we ended our session with the discussion of ULSI or ultra large scale integration. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the evolution of microprocessors. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.